This morning's passage, one of the passages is in um, Luke 3, verses 1 through 14, and um, it's the passage of John the Baptist preparing the way for for Jesus. And uh, I like how the app that we are reading through um, always begins the morning with this prayer, come, let us bow down and bend the knee, let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Um, And so who you know to whom do we bend a knee uh we bend the knee to a king and um this passage uh in in luke 3 reminds us of that i think in a powerful way so luke 3 um it it talks about the 15th year of the reign of tiberius caesar um uh, pontius pilate was the governor of judea and it, it continues and talks about john the baptist um going into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words, Isaiah the prophet. And so what we have here is Luke um, framing the ministry of John the Baptist uh, as as a a fulfillment of this um, sort of prophecy from Isaiah. And so uh, the writer of Luke is, is, is saying that, John the Baptist was this voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. And so there's this uh, this interesting um, uh, imagery here. Uh, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth. Um, and, and for us, obviously, you know, there, there's a lot here that, that wouldn't really resonate with us um, if we're going to drive somewhere or, or even, you know, if you think of like an elected official, uh, uh, elected official or, or a king or a, someone, you know, royalty, um, if they're going to make a trip somewhere, uh, maybe they have a motorcade or um there's you know some you know pr- protective you know security measures that are taking place to ensure their safety but um but in the ancient world when roads weren't built as you know as well and and um would would fall into sort of um disarray much easier one of the things that would happen if a king was going to travel somewhere um what uh, one of the things to to prepare the king for travel uh, would be that there would be people that would go out and they would make straight the paths. Uh, they would the crooked roads. They would fix those roads, and the, the 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 rough areas of the roads would be would be smoothed out to ensure safe and um, you know relatively comfortable passage for the king. And so it's just. It, this is king language that that uh, Luke is using here. That um, that the the ministry of John the Baptist was not just to prepare the way for Jesus, some spiritual leader, um, but the ministry of John the Baptist was was to prepare the way for the coming of the King. Um, and so, uh, what what continues there in, in this passage is. Um, the, the sort of the ways in which John the Baptist is preparing the way for this coming of the king and um, and and John the Baptist here actually gives a really uh, insightful look into um, what life in the kingdom will look like and so um, he says make straight the paths and then uh, in verse 7 John says to the crowd, coming out to be baptized, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? He says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And, and so what do we see here? We see that um, uh, a new king requires us to turn from other kings. There's this idea of, of turning, of, of repenting, of, of um, changing. And so, um, you know, there, there are a few reflections for this morning so far from the text. 
first, um, as you think about your own journey uh, with Christ, uh, how were the roads straightened? How are the, the, the ways, you know, made smooth for Jesus to, um, to arrive in your life? I think it's, it could be good to just stop and think about that this morning. Who, who was it a person? Was it, um, uh, you know, a, a situation where you encountered Jesus? Take time this morning to reflect on, on how um, people in your life uh, sort of made the, or served the role of John the Baptist to make straight the paths, uh, to rough out the, the, the roadways. Uh, so that Jesus might come be a part of, of your life. For me, it was um, one person in particular that, that comes to mind is a youth pastor named Jim Griffith, who uh, when I returned to a church after a couple of years of not being there, because I just didn't want to be there, um, you know, he, he remembered my name and he ran across the room to give me a big giant hug with excitement and, and happiness that, that I had returned to church, you know? Um, and so that for me, that, you know, that was a, a powerful moment that helped smooth the way for me to, to come and, and acknowledge Jesus some, eventually, you know, as my King. Um, and then also, you know, it might be a good, good question for us to sit with today. How might we turn from other Kings? Um, today, in, in this very moment, what does that look like? Um, who are the other kings in our world vying for our allegiance, vying for our um, attention, and um, vying for uh, our lives? And, and how might we turn from those uh, in this charge of John the Baptist to produce fruit in keeping with repentance? How might we turn from those kings to return again today um, to the king of kings, right? And so, you know, the, it raises the question, what does that look like? What does it look like to turn from the kings uh, of this world that vie for our allegiance and return back to uh, the king of kings? And it continues. Uh, and I think um, John was asked this question in some, you know, in some ways, because, you know, here in verse 10, what should we do then? The crowd asked, right? So here's this sort of ministry that's preparing the way for this, this king. Um, and he's saying, repent, you know, ch change the direction of your lives. Um, and, and so the response from the crowd is, okay, well, what should we do? What does that look like? What does it mean um, to turn away from other kings to follow this king? Give us a description of this kingdom. So John answers in verse 11, he says, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Uh, so right off the bat, we see that uh, Jesus's kingdom is a kingdom of generosity. Continues, uh, verses 12 and 13. So then the tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you're required to, he told them. And so second, we see that the kingdom of Jesus is a kingdom of justice. It's a kingdom of generosity. It's a kingdom of justice. And in verse 14, some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. And so we see that Jesus' kingdom is a kingdom of mercy. Um, it's a kingdom of generosity. Those who have an abundance are called to share with those who don't. Uh, it's a kingdom of justice that those who are um, there to, to collect taxes um, who were, you know, often, you know, collecting more than, than was required by law and, and keeping the, the difference. He says, no, we move away from that. And, and so that God's kingdom is one of justice. Uh, and those who were in positions of power and could use that power to, um, uh, to force others to do their will, uh, John encourages, he says, no, the, the kingdom of the king that is coming is, is one that does not um, extort money and accuse people falsely. It doesn't use your power to, to, um, um, to force others into doing what you want. And so it's, it's instead a kingdom of mercy. Uh, 
so today, may we be reminded of the ways that our um, the the paths were made straight, so that we might uh, encounter the King of Kings. Um, may we turn from our other kings in in our world to return back to this King of Kings, and um, in order to do that, may we live into generosity today, may we live into justice, and may we live into mercy. Um, and so the prayer at the end of the, uh, the, the devotional this morning, I think, is a, a, a great one for us to, to pray. God, help us to imitate you as we feed those who hunger for bread, for justice, for companionship, for forgiveness, for alternate ways of living in this world. Give us your words, equip our hands, and guide our feet. Sustain us, Lord, with your healing love. Amen. Amen.